from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi and welcome to the Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. And with me today, my first guest is from the American Red Cross, specifically the Blood Services region. Yes. Welcome Daphne Matthew. Thank you so much, Monica. It's nice to have you here. Daphne, you are the Communications Manager. Yes. And that's for the American Red Cross Blood Services region. Mm -hmm. what, what region is that? What area does that cover? That's Oregon and Washington. We go all the way up into Longview and the Centralia Chehalis area down okay. to Medford, all the way over to Klamath Falls and all the way up to Yakima. Oh wow. So a huge oh, that territory. Is a, that is a large territory. Yeah. Now, most everybody knows the American Red Cross. You've been around for, I don't know, how long is it? How long? Do you know, oh, have any idea? A hundred and thirty some years. That's a little before my time. <laughs> so, so everybody knows the American Red Cross, but you do a lot that probably not everybody knows about. So can mm -hmm. you just give me a, like, a little brief synopsis of, of what all the Red Cross does? Sure. Um, what I'm directly involved with is blood services. Mm -hmm. So we collect blood, we collect platelets, we collect plasma. And all these things go to help cancer patients, people who are su suffering from trauma or you know premature babies. Mm -hmm. So we have the opportunity to help the general public through the generosity of donors. And then we also help in times of disaster. A good example is Hurricane Sandy. Right. And we're at the ready all the time to get out there and help people who are in need. We also do service to armed forces, which a lot of people aren't aware oh. what we do. Now tell me about that. What, it's a it's that? a communication program, and so um, if a if a soldier is has something happen in their family. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe it's a birth of a baby, a loss of a loved one. It could be good or bad. Could, good or bad. Mm -hmm. We communicate that information to them oh. and then assist them in any way that we can. Really? So it's a oh. really nice connection yeah. for our military. And then we also have international services. So uh, we you know, work with all different countries and, and make sure that the American Red Cross is there representing neutrality, humanitarianism, and helping people in need. So that was a very good, very good explanation. <laughs> so you specifically then work with the blood services. Tell me uh, what your job entails. What what do you do? I mean, I know you're the communication, so you're yeah. probably the voice and the face of the of the uh, of that branch of your organization. But wh what do they do in that in that department? Well, you know, I always I, I'm a department of one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just me. Wow. But um, you, what I do is uh, internal and external communication. Mm -hmm. So, you know, working with our internal group, with our employees and our volunteers, and getting the word out to them for whatever they need to be educated about. Or you know, it could be fun stuff. It could be something that's happening in our community. Right. And then I also work with media. So, you know, sending out press releases and then responding to media who have inquiries and um, some speaking engagements and going out into the community and telling people how valuable it is to donate blood and platelets. So why don't you tell our viewers why, why it's important? And I'll tell you, in my viewpoint, not everybody can afford to donate money to charities, mm -hmm. but just, I mean, not everybody can, but the, the, you know, high percentage of people can afford to donate blood. I mean, you know, that's, that's such an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. If I don't have money to give to an organization, I know I can always go and give blood and I'll feel good about doing something to perhaps save somebody's life. Yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of people that don't consider doing it when it's really, really so easy and you make it easy. So tell, tell, tell us a little bit about the, the process of donating blood and, and, and why it's important. It's important because it helps save lives. So um, one unit can help save up, up to three lives because we take the blood and separate it into different components. Okay. And then in addition to that, there's there's platelet donation that's really directly involved with cancer patients. Right. And um, so anytime that you help someone, 
it, it's an important thing to do. The process is whether you're donating blood, donating blood or platelets, mm -hmm. you come in and we have you read over some information to make sure that you're eligible to donate that day. And if a person feels like they may be eligible to donate after reading that material, then they go into a health history time where right. we ask about 50 some questions. So it's an in-depth history right. background. Right. Then we do a mini physical. So blood pressure, temperature, check your iron to make sure right. you have enough iron in your blood to help others and then we move you on to the donation process and that's probably the shortest part of the whole thing yeah, you know is. we yeah, cleanse the arm make sure mm -hmm. there's there's a, that it's all nice and clean and very prescribed in the way that we do things yes. and then we um, just do the needle stick that's probably the part that people worry the most about is yeah, the needle so stick good. I, I've never I don't think I've ever had anyone that hurt me well, they, they, a needle they, stick. I mean, they're you know, they're quick. They're uh -huh. it's painless. The phlebotomists do that every day. Yeah, they're, and they're, so they're, they're professionals. They yeah, they yeah. absolutely know what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, sure, sometimes you know th something may go wrong, but for the most part, uh, yeah. it's really a great experience. It takes about seven to ten minutes to actually donate the blood. It's and amazing how fast. Yeah, how fast you can. And you then you're off to juice it. and cookies. That's right. So that's my favorite you know, part. that's the reward. So about how long would you say it takes for the whole process from going into the, you know, your assessment, your health um, evaluation and all that, maybe? About an hour. About an hour, okay. We ask people to expect an hour. And in times when, when we have, you know, the public coming out, say for instance, during Hurricane Sandy, mm -hmm. we had a lot of people responding and we had right. some public officials who appealed to the public to come out and donate blood. So, uh, you know, we had a lot of people longer just lines, showing probably. up, longer mm -hmm. lines, but, you know, we really found that people were understanding and willing to wait to be able to help. a lot of camaraderie when people are sure. all there trying to help their fellow man, you know, for the same reason. And I think, you know, every time I've given blood, every, everybody talks to each other when you're waiting in line and, and uh, you know, it's just, you know, you're doing something that's good. And you're, you're all like-minded in yes. what you're doing. Yes, yes. So there's a camaraderie yes. there. Yes. Yeah. Now the, plate, the platelets, mm -hmm. I, I've done that before too, um, and that, that takes a little bit longer, mm -hmm. but you've <laughs> refined the process a lot from the first time that I ever took it because it used to be like a two hour um, procedure, but I don't think it takes well, that we used long, to, does it? One of the things that we refined, and in fact I started my career at the American Red Cross in the apheresis oh, department okay. with people who donated platelets, and I was the donor development manager, so bringing new people into the program. and. Um, what we do is there's a machine that sits by you, which mm -hmm, you, you well mm -hmm. know. It used to be that we used both arms. Right. So a donor would literally mm -hmm. be have needles in both arms, which yes. is really heroic, you know, to sit there <laughs> for an hour and a half yeah, or two hours. They give you movies to watch, and it was just enough yeah. time to watch a movie. It's exactly right. <laughs> and that's it's still about the time frame now, but we're down to a single arm donation. Mm, right. You know, we have so many people who want to use their iPad or, mm, you know, yeah, yeah. believe it or not, some people are working oh while they're donating. I mean, but, that's a break for me. Yeah. <laughs> It was, so you get to put your feet up, you get a blanket, mm -hmm. you know, you get a heating pad, stay nice and cozy. Mm -hmm. And during that process, what we're doing is separating the platelets out of your blood and keeping that for patients who are in need. And what platelets do is they help clot the blood. So that's really important for people who are going through chemotherapy because many times they're not able to clot their own blood. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even giving them transfusions would do no good because it, it would just go right through them without the oh. clotting capability. I, and I may be wrong about this, but um, and so um, correct me if I am, but it seems to me I remember being called to do a, a, a platelet donation when there was somebody who was going to have maybe a kidney transplant or something like that because I had some rare antigens in my blood, mm -hmm. so they wanted to transfuse them. Is that, would that be possible, or but am I sounds, mixing that up with my the cell panel thing that I Well, that it I sounds did? to me like you were a directed donor, so it may have been someone specific in the hospital mm -hmm. that... Yes, it was somebody specific, yes. Isn't that a yeah. great feeling? Yeah, yeah. And so like, it's wow. a HLA, human leukocyte antigen, Okay. that matched that person or was a close match to that person. So they called you in specifically to come in and donate, okay. and that unit most likely went out to that person okay. in the hospital. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I remember. And I, I, only, I think I only remember that happening once, but it, it's a really great feeling to be it able is. to do that. Yeah. yeah. Now, you have a couple um, blood drives coming up. We do. So, yes. Now, the, one of them is called the Galaxy Blood Drive. What exactly does that refer to? Well, we want blood donation to be fun. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not always just coming in to give blood. We do a lot of special events. But okay. this one is really unique and kind of quirky, which <laughs> I like is quirky. Is fun. I like quirky. And um, it's Star Wars versus Star Trek. So all, you know, <laughs> all these fans, the Klingons and the 
Chewbacca yeah, and, uh, and Stormtroopers, oh, all of them. You know, there's there's big fan bases on both sides. Yes, there are. There and are. so we uh, thought, well, let's. They do out. They're out in the community doing things for good, and and we met with them and said, how about a blood drive? And uh, they're all all bought into it, and they come in their movie grade costumes. Oh, that's great. And there's families there and the kids are just so intrigued and the adults are intrigued yeah. of, you know getting to meet these people we take pictures and Oof. they're donating blood and so it's just a really great thing it's Wednesday December 29th from about 9 until 2 30 in the afternoon that's great right after Christmas yeah. you know things are slowing down right what a great and it, what a, a neat thing to be able to take your kids to see what you're doing giving mm -hmm. blood because my, kids usually aren't tagging along for something like that, but to right. be able to see what you're doing and to explain to them how they're, you know, this is helping save a life so that as they grow up, you know, when they're, what, you have to be 18, I think, and... 16 si with oh, 16. parental consent. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. once they're 17, they can do it on their own. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's great. So, so do the, uh, do, do you get the, you know, the Chewbacca's and the, and the stormtroopers and everybody out there giving blood too? Do some they, of them well, do that too? Well, the Chewbacca, we couldn't actually you know, do the yeah, arms grab and the, the stick, yeah. so he would have to take his outfit yeah, off, so that It happens, wouldn't be the same, but, would it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but there are the, um, you know, Figures you know, Princess or, Leia or somebody. Yeah, oh yeah, Princess Leia, and there's uh, one gal who comes in all blue, and it's just really beautiful. That's great. Yeah. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it is. So you do have events fairly frequently. I mean, what, uh -huh. what other kinds of things do you do? I mean, is it, do you do this to raise awareness, to, is it as a draw to get people in to, to donate blood, or all We want to celebrate um, special holidays, but the, the reason why we do events like this is because the need for blood is constant. Mm -hmm. So even though, you know, we talked about uh, Storm Sandy, mm -hmm. Super Storm Sandy, yeah. blood donors coming right. out, and, um, you know, they, they came out in more of an episodic fashion where they're responding to that immediate right. need. Right. But what we want to really bring across to people is that you can donate up to six times a year. Yeah. And you can donate platelets up to 24 times a year. So we'd like to see these donors who are coming out in you know, response to that to understand that there's patients consistently behind the need for blood and platelets. Right. And so I f absolutely forgot what your original question was, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, events, are you, are you trying to draw oh. people? So you're, you're, yeah. so you're, you're trying Thanksgiving, to, yeah. we do a Thanksgiving drive we, with pumpkin pie and t-shirts. We do 4th of July. We did a huge Civil War blood drive, Ducks Against yes, the Beavers. Yes, I, I did that one, yeah. That has 11 year history to it. And this year we collected more blood and had more votes than we have in any other campaign in the 11 year history. That's so we great. Well, it was, were a, it was a big one. So people yeah. go and they, and they donate blood and they get to vote on who they're, they're mm -hmm. donating blood in, in honor of the, or in the name of the it's Oregon a, State so Beavers yeah, or yeah. the U of O Ducks. It's yeah. a huge yeah. rivalry, of yeah, course, just in, you know, in the game itself, yeah. but then the blood drive has yeah. taken on a life of its own. That's great. Yeah. That's what a, you know, what a great way to, you know, to make it more fun. Uh -huh. So, um, you have um, something else coming up that I was reading about called the Battle of the Badges. Yes. What, and that I've never heard about. What is that? Well, you know, we're modeling after a Southern California region who's been very successful with um, public safety in firefighters mm -hmm. and then law enforcement and police. And also what like we, the fireman's badge and the policeman's badge. Exactly. And then uh, we have those two forces come mm -hmm. together and do a little battle of their own. So battle of the badges. So how, how much blood they can... Yeah, wh whoever can collect the most for each, you know, representative team. So is it, is it the firefighters and policemen themselves or people who also donate in their name? Like, yeah, they yeah. would come in and fill out a ballot okay, and then vote. so I'm doing vote. it for the firemen, I'm doing it for the policemen. Right, exactly. Oh, cool. And um, what we're doing right now is engaging agencies. And so if agencies haven't uh, heard about it yet, you know, we encourage them to call. And by agencies, you mean like what? Like uh, Gresham. Fire, Gresham, oh, okay, police, okay, okay, you know, yeah. Portland Police, Portland right, Fire, right. yeah, okay, and get okay. engaged in the Battle of the Badges. Fun. Now that is going to be um, here in Portland, is that uh -huh. right? It's in Portland, Portland metropolitan Portland, area yeah. for so the most even part. So just wherever you are, you'll, there'll be, Yeah. you can donate wherever. Uh-huh. And it's a month long. Oh. It's going to be January 16th through February 16th. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. You'll finish up right after Valentine's Day. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask a question going back sure. to the platelets. Um, can, can the platelets be donated anywhere besides your main center, or is that the only place that you do the, that kind of donation? We have three sites. Okay, where are those? So platelets aren't really 
extremely mobile. It right, has to be right. a big That's, site. Yeah, I know you can't take your little your blood mobile out there and do right. that. Right. Uh, so we have three locations and um, in, one in Portland mm -hmm. at 3131 North Vancouver Avenue, right, right by Legacy Emanuel. Right. And then we have a Vancouver site to, you know, for people who live in Southwest Washington so they don't have to come over the bridge. Right. And traffic. that's right at, yeah, exactly, at the Vancouver Mall. Oh, and it's okay. on the Macy's side of the mall. Oh, oh okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. And yeah. then we have one in Richland, Washington. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Good. So we have Tri Cities working up yeah. there for gathering platelets. Yeah, eventually, you'll probably have one down in Southern Oregon too. Yeah, Southern Oregon yeah. or Bend would be yeah, Bend would be a great. really yeah, great location. That would be good. So, um, tell me, I'm sure in the time that you've worked there that you've heard lots of great heartwarming stories. Yeah. Share something with me. Tell me something that has meant something to you as far as um, people that have been helped. Well, I have cross. a story of my own, oh. an experience that I had. Okay, that's even uh, better. Yeah, I was in I was in Texas, and I was at a convention that had nothing to do with the American Red Cross, mm -hmm. but it ended up that Red Cross was all around me, and so I was uh, going to the airport, mm -hmm. got on the shuttle, and there was a man in front of me, and he just said good morning. That was it. Mm -hmm. And then two other ladies got on the bus, and so there's you know the four of us and the right. bus driver, and. Um, all the way to the airport, we talked about you know what we do outside of that convention, uh -huh. and it happened to be that I told her I worked for the American Red Cross and recruited platelet donors, and she said, "Oh, I'm a platelet donor," and so that just in itself was unique because yes, there's yes. less than two percent of the people donate platelets. Really? Yeah, oh. and so um, we the man was still silent, and so we talked all the way about how great it is to save lives and help people out, and then he was getting off to go to his plane. And he turned around and said, I guess I should thank both of you ladies because I'm a don uh, bone marrow transplant recipient. And without people like you, I wouldn't be alive today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and I thought, oh, that's, that's, why, that's yeah. why I work that's, for the Red Cross. Yeah. You know? How cool. Doesn't that yeah. make you feel great? Oh. Yeah. It gives I me mean, a shivers. He probably, I... you know, he probably couldn't even say anything before right. he had to get off because he, <laughs> he probably would have broken down crying. Mm -hmm. I would have. Yeah. Wow. So it was such a genuine conversation between the two of us and not knowing. What, what I saw was the cycle of life, the circle of life unfolding right in front yeah. of my eyes from recruiter to donor to recipient, all in that little bus. It was the, the greatest That's thing. beautiful. Yeah. We're almost out of time. So tell me what, what else we should know about the American Red Cross that maybe we haven't talked about. Well, one thing that we want people to know is, you know, enjoy your holidays, have have a great time with your family and friends, but make that donation appointment to come in at the first part of the year. We, and, you know, we've already talked about the need is constant. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing we do like people to do is make an appointment. And the way that you can do that is to call 1-800-RED-CROSS. There'll be an operator that can help you out and schedule a time that's convenient, a convenient place and convenient time for you. Or you can log on to the website and then um, schedule your own appointment based on what looks good for you. Yeah, and that's, that's what I do now. I, yeah. just, I just look and it's like, Zip okay, code I can do this, I can do that. Yeah, it yeah. makes it real easy. It yeah. does. Sometimes I do it on my lunch hour at work, sometimes uh -huh. I do it after work. Yeah, it works out great. Good. Well, thank you so much, Daphne. Oh, you're you, very welcome. Yeah, it's you've, been a uh, pleasure. Eliminated our viewers on, on, you know, it's it's a simple thing to do, and I hope that yeah. we'll encourage more people to get out there and donate blood. So thanks thank so you. much. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be talking with the Metro Toy Drive. KZME Radio is a new station that is committed to entertain, inspire, and connect our community through programming that celebrates local music, arts, and culture. It was created to put local music and local arts on local radio, and it is a vehicle for our creative community to gain exposure while also celebrating what the Portland metro area has to offer. Hey folks, I'm Mike Midlow from the band Pancake Breakfast. What's so cool about KZME? Well, it's local music. You know, you can't go to every live show. Believe me, I've tried. So you could tune into KZME and hear a bunch of music that you might not get to see otherwise. Why should you support KZME? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you like Portland Town, USA, homegrown music, independent radio, and if you believe in the powers of rock and roll, 
and contribute to KZME. It's music where you live. My favorite thing about community media is how people find their voice and tell their story. It's the message of, by, and for a community. We're a gathering place because it gets people of all sorts of different backgrounds underneath one roof. It's art. It's technology. A snapshot of our community. Going live in three, two, one. one. The League of Women Voters makes history. Our country would not be the same without their dedication. Formed by women who organize to win women the right to vote. It is now a co-ed organization. Studying, informing, and acting. Nonpartisan. Grassroots. Influential. Taking political stands on many issues. The League of Women Voters encourages all citizens to be informed and active in government. Join, Join the, the League, League of Women, women voters, voters of East Multnomah, Multnomah County, County in, in making history, history today. today. Hi, I'm Luke Perry. You're watching Metro East, over 25 years of great community media. is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Están listos? Free GED classes. Are you ready? Classes gratis de inglés. Yo estoy lista. Transportation for free. I'm ready. Classes gratis de computación. Que listos. We're, We're ready. ready. Come to listos. If we can do it, you can do it. What am I supposed to do with all these corks? Turn them into a cork board. What about all these floppy disks? How about a fantastic journal? Hmm, I wouldn't learn how to make cool things like that. Well, come on down to Scrap. Scrap has monthly workshops where you too can learn how to make great things. We provide everything you need. For more information, call 503-294-0769 or go to www.scrapaction.org. Scrap. Create more, consume less. Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel, and I'm glad you stayed with us. Tonight, I have one of my favorite guests returning. This is Wee Win from the Metro Toy Drive. Welcome back, again, Thank Wee. Thank you. And with him tonight, he brought his guest, which is Lisa Osheim, and you are the, you're with Counselor Education at Portland State Graduate School of Education. That's right. Very auspicious. So tell me, what, what is the connection here? Why, why are you two working together on the Metro Toy Drive? How does this work? So glad you asked. So, Metro Toy Drive. We're a, obviously a nonprofit organization providing a uh, means of delivering happiness to kids year round with toys and similar donations year round. And we have a new program called Child Hero, which is a service learning program ah, for children. And that's how Lisa's involved because you are, what, what's your, your specialty there? Well, I'm the coordinator of the School Counseling Master's Program. And so I'm very interested in developing school counselors who will work with children to remove their barriers to social, emotional, and academic achievement. So I'm particularly interested in the impact that toys have in a child's life. Oh, well, that's interesting. I like that. I'm interested in how doing volunteer work as a child impacts them. That's, I, think, I think that is a, a really important thing to get those kids starting, started early. Oh, absolutely. You know? I think that's really great. So we, let's just backtrack a little bit. Metro Toy Drive has been around, what, two years now, three years? What, what are we going on? 
Yes, uh, Metro Toy Drive um, was founded in tw uh, late 2010, mm -hmm. became its uh, official organization in 2011. So we're a little over a year young, okay. uh, almost two okay. years okay. now, about two years. You two started years. out just in the Portland area, but it's expanded from there. Yes, yes, I started as a volunteer for other uh, wonderful toy drives around this area. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to form a new innovative organization to be able to service a much larger area and to be able to help year-round instead of just holidays. And that's the biggest difference, isn't it, is the, the year-round component. Yes. And, and who are the kids that you serve outside of the, the Christmas season? So these could be kids who are in hospitals, mm -hmm. um, shelters, any type of other agency that serve, services kids who are in need in some type of situation. It could be medical related, obviously, um, mm -hmm. um, health, it could be economic, it could be tragedy, something very personal. Perhaps a, a parent died or, or is in jail or something like that, would yes. you consider that yes. a, a, a situation oh, yes. where you would, yeah, yeah. And we have distributed to folks in that realm. We have done that already, yes. And the, the, um, the toys, you collect them then all year round, correct? Yes, oh. uh, we do collect year round. And the majority of the toys come through the holiday season, be ah. right before Christmas, obviously, and even right after Christmas, we get a large influx coming in. And a lot of that overstock provides us with toys to be able to distribute year round. Right. So where where do people take their toys? If if, if we had toys we wanted to you know to donate to to kids that needed them, where would we where would we take them? Oh, absolutely. So our toy drive runs through December twenty six. Okay. And people can visit Ooh. any company Starbucks store in uh, Oregon and Southwest Washington. We have a few of those around. We do. There's about over 200 of them. There's three, right? <laughs> in this, like within a mile of this place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the the partners um, at Starbucks, their employees are referred to as partners. Wonderful, amazing people. They're very supportive, and they really do aim to help the community. So they serve as a very simple conduit for the community, from individuals to other local businesses and organizations who swing on by, drop off a toy or multiple toys, and from there, Starbucks, with a partnership through Zipcar, helped to deliver mm. the toys to our That's warehouse, cool. where we aggregate everything. And then from there, we invite recipients to arrive and get the toys, which are big days, obviously, next week, mm -hmm. which you are going to be I'm there. Going to it's going to be a lot of fun. It's get, going to be fun. Get to meet a lot of the yeah. folks who will be, yeah. that will be helping, so it's That's going to be really great. wonderful. So the people that will come in, it will be um, families that need Toys for their kids, and then you also distribute to nonprofits. Yes, yeah, so we this year we will do both. So we have mostly uh, mostly agencies because they help us reach out to a much larger demographic faster than we can. We want to be very efficient. Want to keep it uh, as a very lean operating system. Right. That's great. At the same time, we, there are families out there who have very specific needs that no one else can help, and with the resources that we have, if we have, if we can review their application on time, which they submit online mm -hmm. on our website, metrotoydrive.org mm -hmm. or .com, and we can review, and if we have sufficient supply, we can Give me provide. an example of what you mean, mean by a specific need. Uh, some families are in very dire straits, uh, especially single moms mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. uh, some folks who have been looking for a job, they can't find anything. And maybe it's a, a tragedy, someone lost their parent, mm -hmm. compared to someone who maybe still has both parents. So in certain situations, there's absolutely no hope left, almost. Mm. And that's where we don't, we really don't want them to go away. We want, we want to help, so we try to help those who need it the most. That's great. Now, I know you've involved um, children in the past, and Lisa, this is where you're, you come in. Tell me, um, tell me how, how getting children involved in this is important and what, what your involvement is here. Oh, we've just had a great time getting the I kids bet. on board. The Child Hero Program is really a, a two-part um, experience for the kids. They have a Child Hero class that they attend with their families, and that's at the university. It's at Portland State, and great. so the kids um, spend a Sunday afternoon every few weeks at our university. And they, they go to have college. A, I bet they it's like very that. Exciting, yeah. yes, and they're getting very comfortable there. Yeah. Uh, so we really yeah, enjoyed it. Stage. Yeah, we thought we were very thoughtful about where yeah. to take these kids, and we decided that the university was the best place. Get yeah. them used to yeah. the college experience, and they come to these meetings with their families. And we also have some of our graduate students who are studying to be school counselors there with us. Oh, and so okay. we have these um, different generations of helpers all coming together um, to plan the toy drive. And it's much more than just planning a single event. What we're actually doing is we're trying to get these kids to really embrace uh, their ability to help others. We're trying to, I guess, create the next generation of helpers. Oh, that's great. Yes, that's and we, great. we really want them to have a very vested
vested interest in the outcome. And so they have set goals. They've thought very carefully about their marketing strategies. We really? have at times separated the kids and the parents, where the parents will <laughs> meet like in one corner and we're with the kids in the other corner. And um, together we're coming up with great ideas. The kids come up with creative ideas. They haven't yet fully learned how quickly their ideas can be shot down. Oh, and so yeah. with so that freedom. So they're still very idealistic. And yes. So give me an example of something that uh, a kid comes up with as an idea for this toy drive. Well, one of the kids came up with the idea that um, he would hang all of his marketing materials at his favorite places. And so he, of course, had selected a location, a yogurt shop that was near his yeah, school. Yeah. And um, he had found his favorite places that he thought would really draw in the biggest crowd. And another child took that idea and ran with it and said he would go to his favorite places oh, yeah. and make certain that his mom was also using social media. And then another <laughs> child it. built upon that and decided that she would actually put some videos up on her, her mom and dad's Facebook account. Oh, and, and she has done that. She's actually created a few videos that have gone out through social media. That's and great. so they really bounced ideas off of each other and have built upon each other's ideas. And of course, as they do so, they get more excited. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So how, how do they feel about um, helping other children? How does that impact the kids? Well, it has certainly given them a sense of personal power. Yeah. Uh, I think that they started the the classes really worried about the kids who don't have toys, but mm -hmm. it was more of a sense of sympathy. Mm. And now what they've developed is a sense of, of empathy as opposed to feeling sorry for the other kids. Yeah. What they're recognizing is that everybody's got some natural resources built in. And what they're trying to do is simply help um, where the resources are lacking. That's and great. so they're really understanding their place in somebody else's world. They're understanding what could lead somebody to a circumstance where they might not have toys. Right. And they're understanding the importance of toys in other children lives. They're realizing it's not just about having fun, that it's really about helping a child fulfill many other aspects of their development. So our, our heroes are feeling <laughs> pretty beautiful. important. We have some pictures, I think, of the child heroes and, and um, maybe we can bring those up on the screen and we, you can kind of, uh, and Elisa, you too, can sure. kind of walk us through it and tell us what, what we're going to be looking at and uh, explain how this all works, okay? Sure. All right. So actually, I actually will let Lisa continue on with these photos. This is the classroom session. Oh, sure. So this is our class at the university. And we were working with some of the children on their goal setting and marketing strategies. Wow. So they're learning some very sophisticated business concepts at an early age. But how old are we talking about? Our youngest child is, I believe, eight years old. Yes. Wow. Up to what? Up to 12. 12. Nice, nice. OK. So that picture there, uh, the programs, there's two components. There's a classroom learning mm -hmm. and there's field activities. Okay. Where they actually now go through an experiential learning process. So that picture depicts what happened at uh, Shriners Hospital. After oh. class one day, the kids got together and they helped to deliver over 200 toys to Shriners. And we, um, of course, uh, helped put together some logistics, mm -hmm. coordinated things, and the staff there were so wonderful. Oh, the, yeah. The kids. Great. We actually got to tour the hospital. Yeah. The kids actually got to sing happy birthday to one of the patients oh, how in great. the hospital. How Very great. rare opportunity. And I don't think, they'll, and no one will ever forget that really. I, right. I didn't believe that something like that would even happen when we showed up. But Shriners, their, their staff and their volunteers are so amazing. So they really helped the kids really experience what that learning was like. That's a great, that is a great experience for those kids. Yes. Okay, now this, we're back to the classroom. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. So these are our parents and kids working together. I think at this point we were planning some, perhaps some events, if I recall correctly, uh, for their own Santa days. And the, the children get engaged as much as they wish. Sometimes they decide to step back and let the parents do more of the planning. Mm -hmm. And when we see that happening, we always encourage the kids to find their voice again. Yeah, I imagine there are parents who would, are just ready to jump in there uh, with all their, their the, great ideas. Oh, but, these parents yeah. are wonderful. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> the, the um, kids, they have their own ideas and they might, you know, hang up things in their favorite places around town. What, you said something about events. What kind of events would, they, would kids be involved in? What are we talking about? Sure. Well, we have a really big event coming up for all four kids, and it's actually this Saturday. Uh, between 10.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. and it's called Child Heroes Toy Drive. And what's happening is the kids, as similar to in college, you have a capstone class, the kids are actually orchestrating through support of 
university faculty, grad students, and all our sponsors to run their own toy drive. Wow. So in four different Starbucks locations, they've been promoting, uh, asking for help and support through any channels that exist within what they know, whether it's social media, personal friends, family. And our hope is that the kids will see and learn that when they go out to make a difference for others in their community, especially other kids, their community will come together to support their efforts. And we'd love for kids to learn that in a very early age, mm -hmm. to realize that there, there's a lot of good in the community out there yes. if you're willing to take the lead first. And we want the kids to be leaders. Well, we want them to make a difference. Teach them to be leaders. That's a wonderful thing. And if they can do that, it'll be amazing yeah. for them. We invite the public to show up. So the kids are, there's four kids that are child heroes this year. Yes. And are they, uh, they work, or do this at the Starbucks that are like close to where they live? Is that how they do it? or they're Generally, generally, generally yeah. it's very close to where yeah. they, they're located. And each child has obviously a Starbucks store and that store is very supportive of their efforts. They've met the staff members, the managers. Mm, that's great. And the partners know the heroes, they got their signage up and they're, they're just waiting for this big day to show up. And we hope that the kids will be surprised because a lot of these kids, they don't know if just if anybody how many will show, will show up. Or, up. Or, yeah, if so, anybody will bring any toys. Here we are on TV. Uh, hopefully, whoever's watching this will see one of these locations, maybe near them. They will show up and maybe bring a few toys and make their day to see the smile on their That'd face. And people can take photos with the kids. Are the locations on your website? Yes, yes, yeah. there's a posting okay. for that, yes. Okay, so <laughs> I think this is great. The kids, uh, the kids that are involved, the child heroes, how do you find those kids? How did they come to become involved in this? This initial class consists of kids who are the children of the parents who have volunteered very closely with our organization. Okay. And a lot of these kids, I believe, sense. when they started, had some areas that we felt that they could really do well in with mm -hmm. the program, areas that we felt that by participating, they can improve upon as well. So for the first class here as a pilot program, we wanna do everything possible to make them successful. And depending on how things go, we will assess and evaluate how things go after the season. It's about a five month mm -hmm. program, the way it started this uh -huh. year with September's first class. We would love to expand it and create an application process to make it available to more kids. But that of course depends on what type of support that we can earn in the community. Hopefully people who are watching this, whether they know a, their, a foundation, a, a company of theirs that would like to sponsor a child development, mm -hmm. a service learning program, that Child Hero could fit that profile. Right. Okay. So tell me then how the public can support this. Obviously, we can take toys to Starbucks. And these are unwrapped toys, I assume, yes. new, new unwrapped toys. Yes. Okay, so and we can go online and we can look and, and see where those kids are, which Starbucks they're at, and help mm -hmm. them with their, are they, are they competitive about it? They... Actually, Lisa, how did we choose to do it? <laughs> well, we tried to infuse a little friendly competition, mm -hmm. but they just like each other too well, oh, so they didn't great. fight on that. That's great. They, they've really ended I up mean, being so supportive of each other. competition is fine, but you know, right. that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's been great. Okay, so how can, um, you, you said something about an organization might be able to become involved. Say, say if you know, my, my company wanted to become involved, how, how would we do that? What would we do to help the Metro Toy Drive? I or would, to help the child heroes or any aspect of it? Yes, um, well, like you said, people can donate toys at mm -hmm, any Starbucks mm -hmm. location right now through the, the 26th of December. They could definitely hopefully attend our Child Heroes event this Saturday to really see uh, what we have going on in the community. And from a larger strategic standpoint, we would encourage folks to visit our website, metrotoydrive.org or .com, and kind of read what uh, the program is doing. And really to reach on our contact button on one of the tabs, just send us a message. Say so we'd be interested in learning more about the program and how we can help sponsor and be a partner in the program. And that would really help it to grow and develop because right now we want it, we're taking it slow, but mm -hmm. we, we want to do it right. Good. They want to make Good. sure we work like every that. angle correctly so that this will be a very strong program that when kids enter into the mm -hmm. program and they participate, they will come out very spectacular. I, I have no doubt. I remember meeting, um, what's her name, Michaela? Michaela, yes. Michaela, yeah, she, yeah. Was, she was on here. And she was like one of your very, was she your very first child hero or one yes. of the very first? When the program was yeah. still in when it was in its infancy, it really infancy. wasn't even a program yet. No, it You're wasn't. Just, yeah. It was just an idea. Yeah. So yeah. What would happen if we did this? And yeah. we tried it, and she was very successful. Yeah. She got the community to show up to her special day at the Starbucks store, and 
it's like, wow, this is amazing. If the community can do this with one child hero, what can we do if we actually increase the program to, yeah. to grow? And now we have four kids for this year. You know, in, in a couple of years, you're gonna come on here, you're gonna tell me we had whole classrooms that are our child heroes. Can you see that? I, I yeah. envision maybe one day down the road, it, it could be Metro Toy Drive School for Child Heroes and Gifted Youngsters. There you go, I like that. So what, what do the kids get out of it? Obviously they get the, um, they, they get some, gain some leadership, they uh, you know, learn empathy, they, you know, they're, they're learning a lot of things, but what, what else, Lisa, tell me, what else do you think that kids gain from this experience? Oh sure, there's some very practical skills that they're gaining. They're watching all of the adults in the classroom as we interact and make decisions and mm -hmm. disagree and agree, mm. and so they're learning these valuable business skills, <laughs> negotiations. skills, yes. <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's all being done in a really phenomenal way. Uh, I think that everybody is demonstrating exactly the kind of behaviors that we hope to see from our children when they grow up. And so these children are learning these very practical skills about how to get along, how to engage in group work. Uh, that, that is a skill to be cultivated. Oh, it certainly is. Yeah. They're really learning how to do it. They're learning how to navigate different personalities and different barriers and challenges. It seems like they're even learning some marketing skills and yes. things like that, aren't they? You know, how to how to market to the community to get back what they what they need for the kids. Well, we're just about out of time. Anything else that you want to add? What what else do we need to know Wee, before we let you go? Well, first of all, thank you for everyone who's watching this, who has supported us, to all our partners and sponsors of the program, um, the organization as a whole. We would not be here today if it wasn't for everyone out there. And to everyone who's even donated just a single toy, it really does make a huge difference. Yeah, I'm sure it does. And we hope to earn your support down the road and please visit our, our site and we'd love to hopefully find new supporters and sponsors yeah. of our Child Hero program. Good, good. I'm excited about going out there with you on the, on the 20th. So it's be fun. thank you Lisa for being yeah. on the show so much. We, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. And thanks for tuning in to this episode of Community Hotline. Now you know where to go to take those uh, unwrapped new toys and support some of the kids in the community that, that need it. And also to help the leaders that these uh, these child heroes are going to be. I'm Monica Weitzel, this is Community Hotline. We'll see you next week. Star was my guardian angel when my life was in shambles. They helped me find counseling and shelter. Venus Star is great. They helped us pay our utility bills. And find health resources. I'm in college now because Vienna Star helped me find scholarships so I could put myself through school. Call 503-823-4000 to find out if Vienna Star can help you. Gracias, Vienna Star. What local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard.
Volunteers are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Help provide services to thousands of your neighbors. Sound impossible? 1,700 members of your community are already doing this, and so much more, by volunteering with Multnomah County Library. Library volunteers help their neighbors by teaching computer skills, shelving materials, and promoting literacy in the community. The library provides a wide array of services, including lending popular books and DVDs, computer access, and life-enriching activities. Give a neighbor a helping hand and spend a couple hours a week at the library, making your community a better place. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community.